How close were you to Tupac? I did a lot of shows with Pac. I went on a roll with him. Like I said, we did the movie. We did a couple of tours. We were pretty cool. We, I've never had one fucked up incident when I was around Pac. So I've always had good experiences. We would smoke together. We would ride in the same limo together to concerts. We had a lot of concerts together. So he was always cool to me. I know people might say he was, you know, he was this or that, or he was just, you know, funny because he wanted to be this type of person or that type of person. But sometimes you just got to let a motherfucker be who they are, you know, accept them for who they are. And that's it. And that was me. I didn't judge him for none of this shit because I came from hard life too, you know, so. Being connected to Compton the way you were, or the way you are, actually. How did you feel when, when the murder happened in, uh, in Las Vegas and what ultimately started happening in Compton when the war broke out afterwards? To me, uh, I felt like basically just knowing him for the time I did, I thought it was, you know, one of those scenarios to where you ask what you get for, you know. He left us with this image of being this, you know, one minute he could be, you know, girls, fuck that, and stand up and empower yourselves to one image, it was fuck the world, and I'm going to shoot you and blast on you to one image, I'm gang banging, and I'm with Suge and the Bloods. And, and so to me it was a hard road because it was some of those situations that he should have avoided, you know. Gang banging is going backwards. You know, especially if you started off on a different path, like you you didn't start here. You started in other places, Brooklyn, whatever. You didn't start here. So to go through all you went through and your end result is being killed in a drive by affiliation is like is like way beyond the aspect of 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 because you could have been here and left a, a way better mark especially when it came to the, the rap game. But like I said, I was, I was one to never judge. It just, to me, I just felt like it was a fucked up situation because basically you didn't have to be in that situation. Well, I interviewed BG Knockout. Okay. You know? Yeah, I know BG. Uh, and he was best friends with Baby Lane. Exactly. I knew Baby Lane. You knew Baby Lane? Exactly. Okay. Um, My boy knew him real good. Really? Real good. A lot of stories have come out and so forth, but the, the general story was that, you know, there, there, was, there was a conspiracy theory that Suge had Tupac kill, exactly. which, which I thought was always stupid. Exactly. I, I, never, I never believed it because there were shots all over that damn car. Exactly. You know what I mean? And so forth. But the, the story that I believe and everyone I've talked to ha has really uh, confirmed this was that you know, Tupac was killed gangbanging, essentially. You know, he, he went and assaulted a known gang member who, who had a history of shooting at people. Exactly. And then right afterwards, a drive-by happened, you know, with, with the people that he just, you know, that he was just gangbanging on, essentially. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, there was actually a documentary that came out recently. Did you see it? I, I heard rap? about it, yeah. I heard it. Where, My boy uh, from New York called me about it. Right. Um, I, I know the guys. I actually interviewed the guys, uh, Greg Kading and all the, all these, you know, and some of the other police officers around that, as well as BG Naka okay. about this, um, where uh, uh, Keefe D, uh, actually, Keefe. you know Keefe, yeah, and Keefe D actually testified on tape about the actual events of the shooting mm -hmm. and basically said that the shooting was a retaliation over over what had just happened. Exactly. You know, and he, he named everyone in the car, including including Orlando, and said that Orlando was the one that I should do. Exactly. Shit. I saw, I, I've heard about the documentary. Yeah. I mean, the streets talk. Eventually the streets talk, and like I said, it was basically a situation Pac shouldn't have been in. Like you said, it's gang banging. Gang banging or whatever people want to say, but when it boils down to it, 
they say, you know, you had the Bloods and you had the Crips. And everybody knew about the incident that happened with yeah. the chain and the mall and all that. Yeah. So my thing about that is like, you have to really tread lightly when it comes to gang banging, affiliation, and who you fucking with. Because you might be trying to prove a point to the dudes you around, but you never have any idea who the fuck you fucking with. And you don't know if this dude done killed 50 motherfuckers or nobody. So by him by, by him not being from Compton mm. and knowing the foundations of these real dudes, he kind of stepped into a world that he wasn't going to probably be able to get out of. Because once you start that and you get the dissing and you get the claiming, hey, I'm a blood, I'm a crip, and you start affiliating yourself, then people are going to take that down to history. Now you're stepping into a world that ain't got shit to do with fancy chains, million dollars, and hotel suites. Right. Yeah, because it, it, it really, you know, when you look at the, 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 uh, the, the chain of events that, that transpired, there's absolutely no reason for Tupac to walk up to Baby Lane at all. No, but from that, he felt like, like I said, he felt like he was representing. He felt like because I'm associating myself with these dudes with the pirates. and I'm associating myself with the mob and I'm yelling it on records and you know, fuck the rap game and this is the mob and MOB this, MOB that. He wanted to show them that he really wanted to be loyal to them. I mean, I get it, you know, yeah. but it's certain things that you don't do just for, you know, to want to be long. You know what I'm saying? Especially as a grown man, you know, people gonna accept you for who you are. If you're just a rapper, you're just a rapper. They gonna like they they shouldn't like you no better if you're a rapper or hey man, now you gotta put this rag in your back pocket and be what nobody Nobody put in his, like, you got to do this. He wanted to, he wanted to belong. But like I said, at the end of the day, that costs you. Because when you enter in that world of gang banging, niggas don't give a fuck because you got a record or a gold chain on or your name is Tupac and you've been in movies with Janet Jackson or whatever. These are the streets. These streets have been here way before rap music came along and they gonna be here after. Just like there's no, just like rest in peace Tupac, uh, rest in peace Baby Lane, you know, they still out there gang banging. They still out there shooting and killing. And even though the homies is gone and dead and they buried or whatever, they still out there gang banging. So you have to think, especially if you didn't have to be a part of that. Some of us had to. Some of us grew up there, yeah. so it's no choice. You either gonna be long or you gonna get fucked over. But for somebody who years down the line, like this is no, this is, you know, this is no choice. Do you know Keefe D? I know him a little, a little from around the streets. He's from my boys' part of. He's from my boys' neighborhood. Okay, they from the same neighborhood. Okay, but 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 you don't actually. So you know him a little bit, but yeah, exactly. I mean, when you, did you hear the actual audio confession? I didn't hear it. I mean, I've been getting calls because a lot of dudes from out of other states want me to like, hey man, have you seen this or have you heard it? How authentic is this or how real is it? And if it's coming from a dude who know what's going on, then you gotta, 90% of that is probably real. Well, he's actually the last living person that exactly. was in that car. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you have to take it for heat. That's how I say it. you can't second guess. You can't second guess. You have to take it for heat. And if a person is talking about what really and he was there and it, it, what else could he be getting out of it? You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, what, what he got out of it was he was facing life in prison. Exactly. And uh, he, he was basically they had surveillance on him because he was running a heroin ring, mm -hmm. and, uh, a PCP, a PCP ring. And in exchange, like like I got the whole story from the actual right. from the actual uh, police officer, and the, the the thing was was that he was facing life in prison, and he had a chance to get out of that by giving them a bunch of information they wanted, and 
his testimony, his statements could not be used against him to to implicate him in those crimes. In those situations. Yeah. Mm. Well, that was smart. Hey, but like I said, if you got a chance to, to speak your story and it's not going to implicate you and you want to have a chance to tell people what really happened, maybe that's why he did it. Maybe he wanted people to really know what was the realness behind Pac, Biggie, Puffy, Baby Lane, and whatever, you know. We around Compton, we've heard it. A lot of dudes knew the real story from the beginning, so it's kind of old news. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's fascinating to a lot of people on the outside now who didn't know yeah. what the truthness was about the situation. People just thought it was, hey, Pac kicked somebody and whatever, and they shot him or what. They never knew what was the realness about, but it's been floating around in Compton ever since it happened. So, so the stories that they depicted in the movie, was that similar to the stories that you've been hearing? Yeah, definitely. I mean, those stories been floating around even before it made the papers, even before whoever was recognized. I mean, because when you know people from certain neighborhoods and they've been there all their life, shit is just going to come to light anyway. You know, when you talk about going backwards in terms of you're now a, a rich, successful person, whether it's in music or whatever else, and then you start affiliating yourself with gang banging. This is something that me and Trey D actually talked about on camera. Well, let me just play you a little, a little piece here. You've seen an interesting trend recently when you see people who haven't been affiliated with gangs join gangs, affiliate themselves with gangs later on in life. You've seen that with like Lil Wayne. Uh, you've also seen it with Chris Brown. Yes. Um, I don't know what the situation happened you know, at that club with Chris Brown and Sugar, whatever. But, you know, the first thought was, okay, this sounds like it's gang related. Yeah. You know what I mean? It Just did. from the from the outside. It did. From the outside. You know, how, how do you feel, you know, as someone that has been banging since 10 years old, how do you feel when someone who's rich and successful that's never been around gangs before decides in their mid-20s or, or so forth to start affiliating themselves with gangs? Well, I feel it has to either be a psychological defect to where you don't want to enjoy your life and enjoy your wealth and, you know, uh, ride around on boats and, you know, pop bottles and just, just you know, live a, a, a stress-free, you know, uh, uh, life uh, as far as attracting unwanted attention and aggression upon yourself. Why would you want to be rich and start fighting people? I mean, that's, it makes no sense to me. So, you know, I, I see I it as like they, uh... the peer pressure aspect is that, you know, is this what you really want for yourself or do you feel that this is the only way you'll be secure in certain areas? So are you buying into it for protection or I feel dudes do it because they fascinated with the lifestyle. And when you got a when you got a billion dollars in your pocket and you can hire a hundred security guards, you do what the fuck you want to do. If I want to say I'm a crypt today, that's what I'm gonna do. Who gonna stop me? Who? First of all, you're not gonna even be able to touch me. And half the dudes who start doing that are in that position. You ain't finna see Chris Brown walking through the swap meet with just two of his homies talking about I'm a blood. You gonna catch him at the Grammys or something with thirty bodyguards, and he's saying I'm a blood. Yeah, but look what happened though. But it's still to them. It, 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 but see, that's one situation well, because like, that, Suge, Suge got shot right next to Chris Brown. Okay, L literally in the same section, and, okay. and it's actually kind of crazy because I remember that weekend. Like I know. So it, it, it is a situation where uh, somebody was supposed to have been shooting at Chris Brown, and Suge got caught. I, I Whatever the situation. I, I have is. no idea. But but there you go, again. He's saying I'm a blood, he's going out in public, he's got security protection, somebody bust on him, whoever, somebody else got shot. That's gonna be the end result. Mm. You're never gonna be able to touch him, how? So that's, I, I don't know if it's, and I don't think it's to the point to where they feel like, oh, let me start gang banging for a sense of security they start doing it because I feel like I'm a badass motherfucker and I can do what I want. 
and it fascinates the bitches. It fascinates a bitch who a nigga could walk in the club and go, yeah, blood or yeah, crip, and I got 15 niggas around me and I'm popping bottles all night. To them, that's hardness. A hard nigga is a nigga who gonna ride up and down the street by himself going, I'm a crip or I'm a blood in front of 30 niggas and not give a fuck. That's a hard nigga. A hard nigga is not a dude who go, I'm successful now and I'm fascinated with, because they were always fascinated with the gang life. <laughs> always. Any guy who goes, yeah, uh, I, got, I got a couple of million in the bank now. I'm walking around with what? Private security all day on top of my homie entourage. So now I got 20 people who surround me like the president. Man, this crib, this bl what you going to do about it? <laughs> it ain't like a nigga going to walk up and be like, oh, you a blood, you a crib? I want to fade you head up one on one. Right. Are they going to step out of the circle and go, yeah, let me take this fade? No, right. because by the time they walk up, the whole front line of security is going to go, fuck that. You can't be talking to Chris like that or Wayne or whoever. So to me, it, it gives them to me, it's like a sense of empowerment, like because who else do you fear? Be, after you get out the element of breaking laws and the police and shit. Who do motherfuckers fear as a common motherfucker? Gangbangers, I'm scared of. That reputation of a motherfucker blood and a crip or just, they got the representation of beating niggas asses, killing people. Like, oh, that nigga, oh my, and, 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 and the little bitty girls or the whatever, they fascinated by that shit. They might go, no, I'm not, but they fascinated. A nigga wearing rags and bandanas and full of tattoos and claiming shit. It's, it's, it's a sense of, I got me a tough ass motherfucking nigga. I guess to me, I've always found a difference between fascination, because you know, I'm, I'm fascinated with gang culture. You know, you could tell by our, by our conversation. And exactly. You could tell by the, the interviews that I've done. I, I did a, an episode of American Gangster on Mac Dre. I, I'm, I am definitely fascinated by gang culture. At no point did I ever say I'm gonna join in and, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna actually be part of this, even though I may or may not have been able to do it. I never even entertained that type of thought because I figured this is this is crazy. Why, why would I want to put myself exactly into this level of danger? You know, because I, I, you know, because from having these types of conversations with actual people, I understand what comes with it all. Exactly. But you're the smart one. Right. But and I can and I, I can afford. I have security when I go out. Like I, I can afford all that as exactly. well. But I never wanted to affiliate myself. I've even had you know I'll, I'll give you one further. I've even had certain people come up to me and say, Yo, Vlad, you don't need security. Yo, my homie is exactly. an OG. Exactly. He go he gonna take care of you. And I said, Nah, I'm cool. I'll just pay for my regular security, so I I don't have to be indebted to exactly. this person. You know, and God knows what that entails. M me. I, I'm, I'm to the point where I, I've never paid for security. If niggas want to come and we go, it, that's it. Mm -hmm. But I get the aspect of having security because it's just motherfuckers out there that just don't like me. Whether I want to be cool with a motherfucker or not, let's just face it. It's just motherfuckers out there that's just not going to like you or like whatever you about. I get it. But... The aspect of using security because you want to start affiliating yourself with a gang is just dumb because the world liked you when you was just a regular singer. They still do. You had a gang of motherfucking fans. Whoever, Lil Wayne, yeah. Chris Brown, whoever feels like this is the next level of my life, so fuck it. I want to be a blood or a gangbanger now. It's beyond me because I started gangbanging because where I grew up, the poverty, the fights, the drive-bys, protection. You don't need no protection when you're living in a mansion that nobody can get to. You're not on a block every day. You're not walking into an average liquor store. If you are, you're sending your security in while you waiting in a limo. Right. You never putting yourself in a situation to where you need to gangbang. So in, in all aspects, I say it's a fascination with the culture that they want to be a part of. So you feel that 
with the Chris Browns, the Little Waynes of the world, they could gang bang but do it safely. Exactly. I mean, shit. When I was gang banging, I had to stand on the corners and avoid drive-bys. I had to catch the bus to school in the enemy territory. So when you get off the bus, motherfuckers sweating you. Where you from? Where you from? Yeah. Why you got that blue jacket on? Why you got them blue school shoes on? Motherfucker, is the school shoes. I had to go through that. I had to go through, okay, if we pull up to this liquor store, we might finna fight when we walk in there because we're in the enemy territory. I didn't have choices to gang bang. These cats got choices because they don't have to go, we need to hit the block tonight and sell a couple of packs to get some money. They send the niggas out for bottles of Cristal. You know what I'm saying? While we trying to scrape together change for a, a bottle of a 40 ounce, yeah. they send a secure, you know, it, it's, it's not a life and death situation. When I gang bang, it was life and death situation, period. I didn't get to go to Grammy parties when I was gang banging. And even as a even as when I turned when I started rapping, mm -hmm. I was still affiliating myself. So it was more for me to be accepted going back to the block as to getting invited to somebody's party. Sure. They don't live that. Like Chris Brown ain't going to the but I don't know what he does. Now don't don't quote me. But why would you want to go back? Chris Brown's not sitting on the corner selling drugs. Exactly. Chris Brown's not selling drugs at all. I'll just, I'm 99.9% .9 sure of this. Okay, and then <laughs> my thing is, what are, where are you representing? Like, what set are you from? I guess he, he represented Fruit. Fruit Town? Or, okay. Fruit, fruit Pyro. I, I, I know every blood neighborhood in Compton, from Fruit Town to Treetop to whatever. I never heard that he was from whatever. He's, but, not, he's from Virginia. Okay, my thing is, why would you want to do, okay, I, okay, I get it. I get it, but then I don't get it. That, <laughs> that's where I'm at with it. Yeah. I get it why you would want to, because to on your level, being a gangbanger is fun. <laughs> get me? Being a gangbanger is fun. We fly private jets. We fucking drink $200 bottles of champagne. We got a million dollar chains. Being a gangbanger is fun. When I gangbang, it is not fun. You get me? It ain't no, the only million dollar niggas are the big drug dealers. And they not even hanging on the block every day with us in the trenches. Yeah. We the trenches gangbanger. So I don't understand why you would want to go that route. Because being a gangbanger is being in the trenches. Yeah. It's not the baller. It's not the drug dealer. It's not the nigga with the Mercedes and the Lamborghinis. Got the house in, in outside of the hood, whatever. Being a gangbanger is being in the trenches. We selling dope over here. $10, $20 pieces. Police is jacking us every 30, 40 minutes. Enemies is coming through the neighborhood looking for people to kill. That's gangbanging. Gangbanging is not a fashion statement of going, I got a blood or crip tattoo, I got a rag in my pocket, and fuck you, I'm a blood. Who says I ain't? I'm a crip, who says I ain't? Yeah. Who go tell me I'm not? He probably got something going on in LA where he might've needed that shit. I don't know why he showed up with it. Probably thinking like, man, look, you know, little young wild nigga from Chicago like guns. Want to see a gun. It was a nice gun. It was nice. Little to none, I just got in a little altercation. And I guess that other case was so weak, they wanted to put something on me. And so I, they charged me with a riot in the penal facility. So it was really just a regular fight? It's a little physical altercation. 